Welcome to part three of our marketing plan for commercial cleaning, janitorial, commercial carpet, and tile cleaning. Uh, this is about uh, putting together a marketing plan to get more commercial accounts. Now, in part three, what we're going to focus on is telemarketing. Now, I know the second that contractors hear about telemarketing, or sending appointments over the phone, they think about all these Google people that call us 50,000 times a day for Yelp, Angie's List, but that's not what this is about. We're a local company and that's all we're really trying to do is go out and introduce ourselves. That, that's all I've ever said when cold calling somebody is, uh, I think of it more as cold networking. Uh, that I'm not trying to even ask for an estimate right off the bat. I'm just going to call and introduce myself and find out who the decision maker is. When I reach that person, is let Bob know or Susie know, this is what we do, this is who we are, and I'd love to come out and introduce myself to you. And that's pretty much it. And that's why you can kind of look at it as cold networking you just you just want to meet somebody so in part two what we did is we focused on targeting and if you click on this link right here it'll take you to part two of the marketing plan and here what we did is we came up with a target market worksheet and the purpose of this is to take thousands and tens of thousands of businesses in your market and narrow it down into a manageable group of people that you can then repeat to three and four times a year. Now, everybody doesn't like the same accounts, so that's why I, I just chose medical, but that's just uh, one group of people. And just like some people like the bigger accounts and some people like the smaller ones, they each have a pro and con to each. Uh, the goal is for you to figure out a group of people that you want to target and that's a good fit for you and your company. Uh, it's critical that after we put together our marketing plan that we create a routine where we are calling on people two or three times a year and then we follow up with them with sales letters and uh, brochures, email, however they like to be followed up with and that's just something that you can just ask people if they prefer to be emailed or mailed you know everybody's different some people don't even like email or, or read it ever and the reason why you want to reach people three and four times a year is it takes anywhere from five to seven depending what marketers you you listen to for people to even remember your name and you have to remember that businesses and people in general are pretty skeptical of contractors, especially cleaning contractors. They come and go constantly. I mean, probably a quarter of the cleaning businesses go out of business every year. And then there's a quarter brand new companies. So that's why it's important that you're, you're calling on the same businesses a couple times a year. So then they know that you're legit. And if you have any kind of marketing material to let them know, let them see it, especially if you have a professional website. Uh, the other part is that you are creating a brand. They are remembering your name. You just have to think about some of these, <clears throat> these big national companies like IBM and Coca-Cola, uh, Taco Bell. <clears throat> think, think of how many times you've heard about them before you, they just came off the top of your head. Well, that, it's kind of the same thing, although we're not going to have that kind of frequency and reach uh, for being a local contractor. But even if you people see your name five or six times in a year for, say, commercial carpet cleaning, they will remember you and they will start to think that, wow, this company must be legit. I've heard of them before. They don't even usually remember where they heard of you.
the second part is that we are gathering intelligence about these prospects. Uh, when we put together a list, we don't know for a hundred percent fact if these people are really great targets. On a piece of paper, they might look like great prospects for us, but that's why we want to call on them. If we have the opportunity to speak with the decision maker, then we can ask them questions and find out. You may find out that the brother-in-law of the owner has been doing it for 20 years. Well, you don't want to keep calling on them every year or every three months. That would be excessive. So you would want to put them in an unqualified list so you're not calling them the next rotation. So that's the second reason why you want to call people several times a year because you're finding out what their situation is. And in janitorial, it's even more important because often they have set dates of when it goes out for bid. So for instance, it may go out for bid December 1st. And if you know that, then you, you cannot, you're not going to waste your time calling them September 1st because you already know. They said call back December 1st. So then you can put it in your CRM and create a reminder to call them uh, on that date. So that's the second reason why you want to target and create a routine where you're calling on the same people several times a year. Uh, the second part here is on budgeting and with budgeting is we want to decide that we're going to spend X number of dollars every month. So if you can afford $500 a month, $1,500 a month, four grand a month, whatever it is that you can afford, you want to stick to that for the long term. No marketing plan is going to be profitable right off the bat when you don't have experience. It's going to take some experience. It's not that the program works or not, it's or the concept. It's it takes time for you to figure out and uh, you know customize it a little bit and become more productive. So I just started off, if you were a smaller, small company, uh, figure 10 hours a week at least, I, I think would be a good start. Uh, wages, you know, that, that's going to be a local issue. Uh, 10 to 15 an hour, I think would be a good start for a phone marketer. Uh, a good incentive could be, say, a $20 bonus for every appointment that they set on top of the wage. Uh, I just averaged out at $12 an hour. Once you add in payroll taxes, again, a, a state issue. Uh, plus, say they made one appointment a week. That would be, that would cost you around $730 a month. So you want to uh, budget this. You, you want to think about this. Uh, what, what can I afford? And more importantly, what can you afford long term? The next part is on putting together a phone script. And I know with phone scripts, people in general don't like the concept of it, but it's actually really important in sales to have a script. Now, that doesn't mean you sit there like a robot and, and read off of a questionnaire. That, that's not going to sound natural. You, you kind of have to fit it into how you talk and how the local culture talks. But you want to start off with an outline, a list of things you want to say, list of questions you need to know to find out if this person's a, a, a good fit for you or not. Of course, people are going to send you curveball questions now and again, so you're not going to be able to account for every single situation. We have a sample cold calling script. If you click on this link right here, it will take you to our sample. And here we just try to give a general, simple back and forth of what can happen when you call on a commercial account and some questions that might come up or some hot buttons that you can use. After coming up with your phone script, then you'll want to create some sales aids. Uh, like I was saying earlier, sales aids are important, especially in contracting, 
businesses because people don't really respect us that much right off the bat. They're, they're, they're pretty skeptical of contracting in general. doesn't matter if it's construction or cleaning or landscaping, but cleaning especially is towards the bottom of the list uh, because just because of the massive turnover in this industry. So putting together marketing material, professional looking marketing material, whether that be your website, email templates, videos, postcards, sell sheets, anything you can do to make your company look legit is extremely important with commercial marketing. Now this is an example of this is an example of content marketing and this would be geared more for commercial carpet but you could use it for janitorial also where we are just talking about all of thin carpeting common carpeting and commercial buildings and this is a common question people ask how come it's so matted down so quick how come uh, it attracts so much oil and dirt by the entranceways and this is just a little fact sheet I guess you can call it and a solution which in for this style of carpeting, uh, low moisture is uh, a great option. Next is creating a follow-up routine. So you speak with somebody, and this is where uh, part of our program is a commercial-based CRM. And this is where this part kicks into it. And the point is that when you speak with people to create a follow-up routine for them based on their interest level. So in our janitorial example, if somebody said that to call them on December 1st, well, you know, that's fine. In the meantime, that could be say three months or six months. I would still want to stay in touch with them and, and plant the seed. And make us memorable somehow so that would be a perfect situation if the bid was long ways off you know three months or six months that would be a perfect time for you to send them some information on uh, some kind of a, a technical question uh, maybe equipment based um, maybe about a material let them know about restroom cleaning, sanitation, uh, stuff like that. Uh, I think that would be a good way, a uh, good valid reason, a, a good business reason to stay in contact with them. Instead of just sending them, um, uh, you know, a newsletter about vague topics that they don't care about anyways. But try to find some kind of reason. And it, it could be, this is just an example, a follow-up could be something as simple as sending them a, a link to your LinkedIn page or your Facebook page. Uh, for commercial, it's probably going to be more LinkedIn, but it, that that's a simple follow-up. And uh, if you understand prospecting, it's just a, a reason to stay in touch with people. Some people are really into LinkedIn for whatever reason. It's, it's more popular in certain industries than others. So that's, you're just reaching out to somebody. So that's a little bit about creating a follow-up routine. The last part is on, now, uh, well, one more thing about the follow-up routines. That was just uh, one example. Uh, another follow-up routine might be that they're not interested right now and they're kind of vague about it and, and say, you know, uh, get back in touch with me at a later point, but they don't give you any hard answers. So in that case, you could start to send them a sales letter. You could send them postcards. You could send them emails. But the point is to, you know, remind them. Because often uh, another thing with commercial carpet or specialty work is they just forget about it something they're focused on something else they're focused on the roof or a plumbing problem and they completely forget about it so even something simple like sending out your business card or a simple postcard it simply triggers that 
they do want to do this, they just forgot about it. Just, you know, just like we do as contractors, we have this long list of things that we want to get to. We just didn't get to it yet. And if somebody remind us, reminds us, then we say, oh, yeah, I did want to do that. So that is the point of follow-up, is to remind people, keep in touch with people. Lastly is analytics, and analytics is keeping track of what's working and what is not working. In, in marketing, you never want to approach it that, oh, I know what's best. I know, oh, I know exactly what to say. You, you kind of want to more think of marketing as you want to learn more. You want to learn what do dentists or or doctors, what what is important to them, and you know what hot buttons can I use? And it might be different than if, let's say, you like restaurants. They might have completely different needs, and you, and then they might care about two completely different things. Uh, banks, for instance, are are going to be big on security, or if it's a defense contractor, manufacturing in general are pretty tight about security nowadays. They're worried about corporate espionage and you know the Chinese um, stealing their secrets or breaking into their computers so uh, they, they, they can have different reasons uh, why they might want had they might want you to have uh, say criminal background checks that might be important to a manufacturer or verifying uh, social, social security numbers but to somebody like a small doctor office, uh, they might not care about something like that. So that's why you want to keep track of what works for what group of people. And that's why we target and put people in different categories to find out what works for that specific group. Now the other part is, that's the numbers. Keeping track of your numbers. And the second part is that you're going to be building up instincts and that's the numbers and instincts is, is something that goes hand in hand they, they work together uh, you, you learn instincts by listening to people and going out there and giving bids finding out what it is they didn't like about the last contractor they hired uh, watching their body language as you talk you may find out that people will get a face on them when you bring up certain topics so then you learn not to bring up those topics so that's analytics is partly uh, the point is that uh, analytics is, is partly about keeping track of your numbers uh, how many calls do you got to make to get an estimate how many estimates that you have to make until you get a close but it's also about uh, learning about your customers and learning what appeals to them.